Hi everyone, it's Linda from Linda Z's in Arlington Heights, Illinois with a really fun video for you today. I hope you're gonna enjoy it. We're talking about vintage sewing machines. Many of you may remember them. Some of you are just going to be in awe about some of the stories. But before I get into this, I wanna tell you a little bit about some of the things we're doing. And one of the things that I love doing with these videos that we're gonna do for you occasionally, are to give you free gifts. Everybody likes free, right? <laughs> so I thought um, we had so many calls last week because you know we have these big fabric bags that we put our leftover fabrics that we do when we do our quilting and a lot of our different projects. And they all all went, Everybody, there was more people than we, um, than we could possibly give. We know we had seven. So today what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a variety of gifts, and it's just the first 10 people that call. Guarantee you'll get something. So you should really call. I think you'll really find it's really going to be fun and it's worth your while. Again, it's free. You can come into the store and pick it up, and some of them are smaller little items. We can just uh, you know, pop in an envelope, and you just have to pay the shipping, which is very nominal. So let me show you some of them. The first one that I love is this Ricky Tim's. It's called the Convergence Quilt Book. Uh, he, you know that Ricky is coming to our store at the end of April, the 1st of May, and we're just thrilled about having an event with him. But look at these gorgeous colors. I don't know, Nick, if you can get into those, but um, it is, I mean, they're just absolutely spectacular. So this is gonna be, there's only one of these that will be in the lot, and they'll be in the surprise bag. Then I have, because I'm gonna show you this, um, a project on this quilt today. Um, it's actually doing some of the uh, plates, and if you've never heard what a plate is, um, some people call it a Dresden plate, but you can also do other things with these plate rulers or with the um, <clears throat> degree rulers, we call them. And so I'm gonna, this is Kay England's book, and again, I've got three of these that I'm gonna give you. Um, these are just really fun things, and I use these all the time. I love the little bunny around the Easter time, and then you just press the nose, and the little um, tail goes back in. Here's a little kitty. Uh, there's a little, I guess this is a little gray kitty, or maybe you could call it a fox. I think it's a kitty. <laughs> and this little guy I just love. Um, I think he's a little panda bear. And again, just press the nose and it goes back in. So I've got some of those. So I have 10 gifts that I wanna give to you. Um, Nicholas, will you put the phone number on our website and when we're through with the video? Uh, again, this uh, runs on Thursday morning. And we had somebody that, um, for whatever reason, they thought it was all closed and it wasn't. And um, somebody called, I think, at eight o'clock Thursday night or nine o'clock, whatever, we were open and um, they got one of the gifts. So um, just see what you can get with it. I want you to have some fun with it and I want you to be able to enjoy. We're trying to get some fun and laughter back into our classes and into our events and this is just part of it. So let's get started. <clears throat> you see what's in front of me? I am so thrilled and I really mean this. It is, um, I couldn't do it right away because I wanted to get some of these machines together. And I picked out actually four, you're gonna see the fourth one at the end, uh, four machines that I thought had very um, interesting history behind them that I thought you would really enjoy seeing. Most of you have heard about this little featherweight that's in front of me. There are many different models. There are many different things that we do. The featherweights can, um, they, many people take them to class with, I have a, some of the um, suitcases back here. This is actually one of the um, suitcases that go for this machine. I have one myself, I have a couple of these. I don't, I don't really sew with them, I do have to tell you that. A lot of people do, but I love them for um, the fact they're just, I've got a shelf and I have different things on it and I have my little featherweights. I have a white one and I have a blue one and I have a black one. This little black one has the, um, the little tray on it that goes up for portability and goes into the thing. It only is a straight stitch, of course. It has the little um, lever on the back that's up and down, all metal, but look at the beautiful etching around the um, end of it. This is a machine that was actually made by Singer. Uh, most of you know that Singer was sold many, many years ago and has only been around for, um, oh, the last 
probably 40 years, um, somebody else owns it. Some other companies have bought it and then it's changed hands a few times. But this is one of the ri really original ones. And you can tell, do you see it has a motor on it? Sometimes you will find some of these old vintage machines, and I have my grandmother's. It was uh, in a, uh, it's a, a, a treadle, and it's in a cabinet, and you know, it would fold down, and it would be at an angle. This will go into a cabinet too. There's old pins back here, and you could actually put, or you can just use it as a portable machine and take it to class with you. Th this is, like I said, it's got a belt on it, and there is a motor in the back. Um, so this was probably not one of the original featherweights that was in a treadle. The machines today, of course, are never, you do not want to put your machine today into a cabinet like that where the machine folds down. Today, those machines need to stay up and straight because of the oiling process. Um, when I go into this, the little feed dogs, this is actually just a straight stitch. It doesn't have any width for your zigzag but it does a really pretty little um, zigzag. It's got a bobbin winder up here, and it has, of course, your thread spool and your tension up here. Tension, mind you, once you get it set up, though, you're only usually doing cotton on this, so your tensions probably are pretty good. Um, we've cleaned up this, and this is not for sale. These are, these are machines that we have for display that we put up to show you. We do occasionally sell some of our featherweights, and, if you do ever want to um, get one, um, just leave your name and we'll, when something comes in that you're looking for, we'll call you. This one is really fun. It's the Robin's Egg Blue. It's a singer. And see the case back here is really fun too. It's one of the original Robin Eggs Blue um, case. One of our um, technicians, uh, Tari, is so enamored with this, her daughter is going to prom and she's making her prom desk, desk dress. And she said, Linda, my husband told me I can have this for my birthday and I really want to use this to make her prom dress. Um, I would have a hard time doing that today because there's so many easy things you can do with it. But I don't know, I think Tari might have a lot of fun with this. It has cams. And I'm going to actually sew on this in a minute, and she's already fixed this. You see this little lever that comes up? There's cams that go down there. It does do, however, just a straight stitch in the zigzag. So the cam is just for the zigzag. It has your bobbin winder here. Do you, do you notice what the front of this is? Of course, it's all metal. They are so heavy that it takes almost a um, muscle uh, <laughs> Olympic person to carry them. <laughs> this all they're heavier than the luminaire no question about it the um the great part about this is that it it's a top loading bobbin system this is not this is one of those little spindle things that goes in from the side and this both of these do not have what can you tell me i think you know right away there's no open arm now think about it. if you want to do a sleeve like this or you want to set in your sleeve it would be really difficult to do that this is from the um, probably the late 50s, early 60s. This, of course, is, can be definitely in that time period, way before that even. But I want you to go over to this third machine that I just think is so much fun. And I could be here, now I could be here for probably an hour. There isn't too much to show on these because they're straight stitch. Now, like I said, I will sew on that one. But this one, I just have to show you this because this was our original machine when we started back in the 60s. This was the first machine, actually one of the first decorative uh, stitch machines, home sewing machines that Bernina came out with. It's a 530. It does have the open arm, which is almost unheard of. Now, their first machine was a hem stitch, and that's way back in the 1800s. But this one is, um, we, we actually sold this in the uh, 60s. And then they had the 630, and then they came to the 730, and then the 830. Um, they kind of started over with their new machines with those same ranges because the um, 830 and the 730 series, they were the largest selling machines of anything in the world. So they've kind of renamed some of those. But let me tell you a few stories about this because I think you'll really enjoy it. If you want to do a de decorative stitch on here, you have to pull this lever out and move it back and forth, and then it will touch the design and you move this lever and it will actually sew the embroidery design out. 
and you can see by this little book, I don't know, Nick, should I put this here for them to see, or where can they see it? Okay, this is, I mean, look at this. This is over 50-some years old, and look at the color still. I mean, it's just amazing to me, the decorative stitching that was able to be done on this machine. I mean, this was an unbelievable, uh, because the um, even though there are metal cams inside, you didn't have to pop in and change the metal cams like here. When the Singer came out with these, you had to, literally, there were plastic cams that you would put in, not this model, but in other models, and you would put those decorative cams in, and then you had to fiddle around and move it. All you had to do here is just move the lever, and boom, you're ready to go with a decorative stitch. So they were way beyond their time for that period. The um, I've just got to go through these because they are just absolutely beautiful. I don't know if you can get that one real close. Can you see that? It's just exquisite. I mean, it's ornament. They call it ornamental stitches uh, sewn on the Bernina zigzag. Um, of course, this is a Fritz Gigoff Limited. Um, that was Hans Peter Oshi, who is the owner of Bernina today. That was his great grandfather. It was um, Odette Ulshi's father, let's see, grandfather and then great-grandfather. The um, amazing part about this machine is that everything is metal. When this machine was sold originally, it was, I don't know, it was an expensive machine. It was a top-of-the-line machine. If you want to buy this machine today, if you can find it somewhere, we won't sell it because it's really a treasure to us. Uh, you'll pay the same price, maybe even a little bit more. So think about what has happened with some of these vintage machines. I'm going to show you something that is one of my favorite parts of this. This little case that's on the back, and I we didn't clean any of this up. We just wanted to show you the way it was. These are all the metal bobbins that um, come with the machine. And look at this. Some of you may recognize this. This is a swing-out drawer. And look at the amount of feet that came, the zipper foot, the darning foot. Wait, I'll show you something about darning. I mean, this is really, do most of you even know what the word is, darning? <laughs> do you know what it means? Um, there is a foot here. And I think if I turn around in this case, is it in here? Because we didn't pull everything out. Oh, we did pull it all out. There was a little darning hoop. Oh, it's in the bottom case here. See this? <laughs> now, see this little hole in here? This goes in here. This little darning part goes in here. I'm going to take this foot off. And if I had a sock, I would put my sock around the open arm. I put this in here. I'd put this under it. And I would put the free motion foot on. Yes, way back in the 60s. They even knew how to do that. I would hold the sock on this. And this was for darning your socks. That's what everybody did then. They did mostly clothing construction, very little quilting. Uh, the quilting that was done way back in the 60s was, um, they even tied with yarn their um, stitches if they did it, but it wasn't really big until the late 70s and the 80s when quilting really came in. So machines like this were sold for real strong garment holders like this jacket. Um, this is all hand stitched, but the jacket was, was actually sewn together. And so any kind of construction, that's what was done. But I've got to show you some of the little tools in here. Look at the, love this one. <laughs> Can you get this up close? This is your, I think this is so much fun. It's the little um, screwdriver to go into the side to take off any of the little pieces. And it's in beautiful shape. The feet, let's show you one that I just love. It's like, a, they're like a piece of jewelry. These feet were all hand polished at the factory. I remember going to the factory in the 70, early 70s, I think it was 1972 when the first time that um, I went there. And these little feet, we saw men, that they would be going down a, um, a conveyor belt and these little feet would be taken off and then they would hand polish them. They literally had a very fine sandpaper and they were just polishing them, and they had a little polishing cloth at the very end of the conveyor belt. It was just an amazing thing to see. Um, look at the little tiny brush. Oh, this is so cute with the little, uh, it literally has a little tiny wire tied around it. 
the, um, I mean, there's, again, like I said, I could spend a lot of time showing you things here because uh, the book is just, to me. well, first of all, the little instruction book, which is really, you know, of course, always in black and white, but, you know, some very interesting things in there. This is all written in Swiss German, and it tells you the name of the person who actually stitched out this machine and sewed it, I mean, who actually made it and worked on it. Today, the new Berninas come with a tag, and the same thing happens. So nothing changes much since the 60s. They have a tag that tells who is the person that actually made the machine. Um, there's a couple of things I want to show. This is really special. I don't know if you can get this up real close to Nick. Many of you may not know how these were named. Of course, Singer was named after the Singer uh, brothers. And, uh, you know, um, these two machines were definitely known all over the world and still are. Bernina was named after a mountain. And the mountain is the Bernina Mountain Range. I was very fortunate a couple different times to have been there. And this is really what it looks like. Mount Bernina is in the center there. That They call it Piz Bernina. And this is all of the information about the different peaks. Um, the wonderful story about this Bernina, when they were naming this machine, they decided, you know, I remember the, hearing the story about Hans Peter's um, grandfather and saying, you know, we've got to really find a, a more modern name. <laughs> and I think what he did is he kind of looked up and said, you know, there's nothing as great and as majestic as the Bernina Mountain. Let's call it Bernina. And I'm sure there were some other, you know, um, stories and things about how they came to the, the um, decision. But that was primarily what it was. And it's still today a huge thing in uh, Switzerland that this um, machine is named after the Bernina Mountain Range. Now, this is something that many of you probably do remember. We, this is a, not this machine. This is another machine we're going to show you at the end. And um, maybe before I show that, I'm going to show you two more tools because I really love this one. This little box, and look at how they put their um, German, it's built in Steckborn, that's where it was made. And then look at the beautiful little awl and tools and the little piece that they would put on the machine in order to do this when they would do leather holes and then they'd sew around the hole. This is a little um, foot. And again, if you can just see the polish, we have not polished this. This is actually the way we, this machine was traded into us in, uh, remember Nick, we found a, a piece. These are little treasures. <laughs> this was traded into us in, I believe, 1981. And what we used to do, and I think it's something we should talk to our teachers about doing again. I know some of you do do this. Um, I love them. I love the little guarantee certificate and the Bernina name. And the Bernina logo has also changed quite a bit over the years. But this is, uh, do you remember this logo, anybody? <laughs> this was pretty funny. It's, um, we actually drew this logo and then this, we looked like, we thought that was a stitch that was on the machine. That's an actual embroidered stitch from the Bernina because Bernina was our very first machine. Then we took on Foth, then Viking, then all the rest of the machines that we carry, which is just about everything. And so what we did is we had to, and I, multigraphic machine, I think that's what it's called. We did, there were no such things as printers at that time when we were first starting our um, pages that we were giving to people in classes. So remember those crank machines? Some of you do, some of you don't. We would literally have to do a master and then they would come through and that's why they, it's amazing that it still looks like this because they were, they were pretty um, thin and they weren't really done real well. But this is um, what we call the lecture on needles because we always still give that. And then this is also on threads. Threads are one of the most important things for most sewing machines. Then we had a yardage chart back here about different widths of fabric and conversion. And then we had, I always gave a um, pattern for an embroidery, or for a uh, cover for your sewing machine. Um, fun things and, you know, really important things that I think most of you will want to see. Now look at this little tissue paper that came in this box. What do you think is in here? Kind of a fun one. This was something that 
everybody used if they were a garment constructor at that time and look who's falling apart. This is one of the original rufflers. And this ruffle, it gathers and makes little ruffles on it. Um, it says on here, if it says a date, but you could change it from, you know, to making it bigger or wider by just moving this lever over. And <clears throat> Bernina came with an adapter at that time because they didn't actually make, um, you can see the adapter is on this little zipper foot. That's a, this, this zipper foot is, um, you know, goes from side to side. There's different ones now, but this adapter would fit onto this and then it, it would go up and down as you were sewing and you could make your, your gathers and ruffles. So I love the packaging. I think it's um, really, really special what they did and then putting, they wrapped it in tissue and put the little bags over it and whatnot. Last machine that I wanna show that I think, and of course, before I get into this, <clears throat> what do you think this was for? This is for your metrazine thread that hasn't changed at all. Back in the 60s, when we first started Linda's Ease, we carried the very first metrazine thread of anybody in Chicago. Nobody carried it. We had seen it in Switzerland. We knew it was just a strong, really good quality. It is yet today. I believe it's an Austrian company today, but it's still called, oh, Amman, I think, owns it, and it's... Uh, Still a wonderful, strong thread, one of the strongest out there. In fact, I have a spool of silk thread that I'm gonna show you that we use a lot for quilting. So they would have their threads here, they'd have the bobbins all lined up here, and all of your feet and attachments in here. And then, this, there's a spindle back here that you can't see. Maybe I'll turn it around so I can show them. And this whole entire piece would just turn around. Oh, can they see it? Oh, good, okay, so see this little spindle? And it just goes out and back like that. So a very, very easy um, piece to carry. Now, since I told you that I had four machines, what do you think the fourth machine is going to be? Maybe before I show it to them, I wanna show them a couple of notions that I'm going to do on here. Um, this, these little um, microwave brushes or micro, what do they call them? micro, micro brush? <laughs> and they're little tiny um, little heads at the end, and they are perfect for these kinds of machines to really clean them out. Um, this is not like this darning hoop. Now, I don't know many people that darn their socks today, but we have a whole bunch of these. We use them in Kimberbell and in License to Create, and they're just a really fun uh, little hoop that I, I'm pretty sure it's on our website. And you can do a small embroidery design in there and capture whatever it is that you're looking at. Um, last, and I'm gonna show you this as I do it, I tried to pull off a, um, a, term, uh, a tube pusher or a <laughs> what you'd call a uh, pointer. And instead, I pulled off the Notions Rack, a weeding tool. So you don't wanna use a weeding tool to poke your, um, your seams out, but if you leave the plastic on this, I'm gonna show you what you can do with it. So let's see if this work, if this sewing machine works. You think it does? What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, and this is a really fun project. This is Kay England's plate video. And you know, Kay isn't, she's semi-retired. Um, we're hoping to get her in November for our quilt week, and I think she will be coming. But these plates that she's done around here, there's many different ways of doing plates. There's Dresden, there's the one with the circle in the middle, and then there, and we do have this on our website. We do have a few of these left. Look at this. I think this is just really wonderful. And Carol, thank you so much. My sister made this. As some of you know, we could call us the quad sisters, I guess. We have, I have, uh, there's four of us that are sisters that are quilters. And um, if you saw our video from, oh, I think it was three weeks ago, I went to Arizona to um, visit my sister. And so you see all the cactus, they, they thought that was really fun. And we did, went to a uh, quilt festival where we could see all these women who had all of their quilts outside and hanging in the, on their garages and their front. It was a whole day of quilt display because of COVID, they couldn't really do it in their studio, I mean, in their big stadium, so they did just the um, quilts at each home. 
And so my sister decided to make this. She, my, this is Carol, my sister in St. Louis, and she did it with a Dresden plate. Now, you can do a Dresden plate with lots of things, with a degreed ruler. I do like um, Amanda Murphy's. These are her wedge set of four. These sell out so fast, guys. If I know they're on our, um, and there's all different degrees of them because you can see there's different sizes. I did make one already. See how this is a little smaller one. I have one in here that's quite like over there on the um, table. Nick, if you can see this, see this is a very large one. And the ruler that I used for the ones I'm going to show you today are one of the Good Measure K England rulers that are no longer made, sad to say. I don't know, Kay, you retired, and then this is what happens. <laughs> I think it's the 22.5 degree wedge. It's phenomenal wedge ruler. You can do, you know, you can do a four and a half, a five and a half, six, seven. You can go all the way up. You can determine your own. You don't need patterns for this. This is a real simple thing to do. Um, there's also, um, they come in up, you can see it a little bit better on this package, so you can see what it is. You could do like grandmother's fan, they call it, or Dresden plate. You could do the tumbler blocks with this ruler. I mean, there's just a lot that really would go into it. So what I've done is I've cut a few of these smaller um, um, Dresdens, and they're in a, um, I think I did four and a half inch for this one. So let's see if this machine will work. Now, I don't have a quarter inch foot, so I'm just gonna have to, now there is on here, let's see, I measured earlier, and the edge of the feed dog is where my quarter inch would go. So once you know where your quarter inch is, then you can go ahead and, and guide it all the time. And I have a little blue cord with this machine, which is just amazing. Now I would just keep sewing them. I'd have a whole bunch of these, and I just, what I do, is I just go one right after the other, and you see how it will go off the fabric very, very easily. So I gotta look at the back of the stitch, though, to see if it really is sewing. That's where you're gonna really decide if this is a good machine or not. And um, <clears throat> Tari, if I think it's really got a good stitch, you might get this for your birthday, maybe. I heard your husband wanted to buy it. Okay, <clears throat> these are, um, Kim Buckley's, those are those wonderful little rubber scissors, and I know you see me using those a lot. They're fabulous, they're the medium size, so I think they're on our website too. All right, you, if you've done, you know, I do a whole bunch of these at one time, so I don't have to, then I can just go through and clip them and cut them, and then I take my turning tube, which I like the Floriani one. This one happens to be, like I said, I grabbed this off the wall, and can you get this, Nick? Okay. So I am just turning this, see at the point? Pardon? Okay. See how I put that point in there? And I can get that. And I have my Laura Star on, so I'm going to go over to that and press it. And then I could leave this, and I could put a round circle all the way around here and put it, cover it that way. I can sew these together. Once I've made my, as long as they're the same size, of course, I could sew them together like my sister has done here, and then she top stitched. The, see, this is a, the bottom is all one color, the green, the dark green, and then she took and put these pieces together, and then she put them on top of the green and just top stitched them down. And then she did another row of stitching for her quilting. And there you have a table runner, which is easy and quick. Everybody thinks, oh my gosh, Dresden plates or you know any of these uh, wedge rulers, those designs are gonna be really hard to do. They really aren't. They're really fun to do. And so I could do it like this, or then I could take the bottom, which I'm gonna do here. This is a little one. And again, when you're doing something like this, you want that fabric to go right up, no matter what machine you have, you want it to go right up next to the um, to the needle so that it won't jam on you. And do you see how it's not jamming? Let me get you another, now let's do a small one here too. Oh, let's see here, we're gonna put the right sides together. I've turned one already, so it kind of looks like I don't, I might, I might have sewn it wrong, but I didn't. 
<laughs> and again, okay. you got to be a little careful with sewing too long uh, off of the fabric because that needle doesn't, then that um, machine doesn't like that. So now you're going to take the bottom, you've already turned the top one, and if you've got a real good quarter inch, even on a real small one, now do you see how you have a little point here? Can you see it there? You've got a point here and a point here, and this is the baby one. This is a bigger one. Now you would want to do all the same size in order to put them down flat because they are going to go into a circle. But again, on uh, Kay's plate uh, DVD, which I think I showed you under here somewhere, this, um, if you really are looking to do some of this, and I'm going to show you a place in this free book that I gave for some of you. It's page 36 and 37. Here's all the instructions. The easiest thing I've ever seen for plates. Uh, quick, easy, fun. You could do um, a whole string of these. All you need is a straight stitch, good quality machine, and you're ready to go. So I hope this has given you a little bit of an incentive of, I mean, look at, I'm, I'm here with, um, gee, how old are these? These are 50 some year old. No, they're more than that. They're a little, some of them are over 70 years old, the uh, machines, and they're sewing beautifully. So I, um, well, sometimes older is better. I guess I've heard some of that. <laughs> and I just encourage you to try some of your things that you've done. We do fix these. Um, I would say we get in probably one or two featherweights every single month. Um, because sometimes people, and I saw a video not too long ago where one of our, one of the national quilting instructors was out camping and she, she took this little, you know, featherweight with her and put it in her small little camper and she was just sewing away in the morning. So it's really kind of fun to see what you do with them. Um, you know, you'd want to, this is not a machine that you're going to want to portable um, to class, I don't think, because they're heavy. They're really solid. And um, I think the newer machines with some of that, you know, space age uh, materials that they put in are just so much easier to use. But Hope I've given you a little taste of some of the older things that have happened. Uh, enjoy. How many of you remember any of this? Well, I'm going to take and show you one last machine and see. let's see if you remember that. So this is it, the Bernina 830. Now, I know there are people out there that are already sewing on this. I know it's not your only machine. Some of you have a bigger machine, but I know you have this. How many of you have one of these machines? <laughs> Teresa, you're raising your hand. I didn't know you had that. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I know my sisters are raising, a couple of them are raising their hand. And I'm going to show you real quick. I, I've gone way over because we were just going to do 10 minutes. Of course, it's gone to 30 some. Um, but I did, when I was down there for that quilt festival, I did a um, video of uh, Joan in her quilt room where she was uh, sewing on her Arizona machine. So uh, I'm not gonna come back. We'll just finish with that particular little clip of a video. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. It's really fun. See you next week, everyone. I'm sure some of you probably recognize this wonderful beauty. Uh, I'm here, as you probably know, with my sister Joan in um, Mesa in uh, Arizona. And this is her sewing, her second machine. She has another huge, big machine at home, right? Yes. In your main home. Um, but, I, Joni, tell me, how long have you been sewing on this? <laughs> I have been sewing on this machine since uh, the early 1970s. And it was my mother's before that. So uh, this, when we bought a place in Arizona, I decided to bring it here to sew. And it's been perfect because it's, uh, you know, it's just a great machine to sew on. It doesn't have a lot of the fancy things like uh, automatic threader and cutter, but other than that, this machine is awesome and I love it. It's absolutely perfect for me. I could do everything except, well, I have even quilted on it before too, but. Wow, that's pretty cool. You, I noticed you have some pretty modern things on it. Like, I do, uh, I do. I have the, the light here. Um, mm -hmm. What's that called? It's the, um, I'm sure you would ask me that. <laughs> I, I only have four of them at home. <laughs> it's some 
I think it's our so I don't know. It's our light. Our, it's, a, um, it's a bright light. Yeah. Oh, let's we'll let's have, delete this part. <laughs> yeah, we'll have no. You know, we won't delete it. We'll have Nick insert the name so you know what it is. It's a wonderful. Okay. Li- it's a wonderful light. I should have the no name idea. of it. But anyway, and I, and I also have this little um, light that goes on the side. It's rechargeable. They're both LED. This LED is great, as you can see. It gives a lot of light. It only takes about a half hour to recharge it if you need to recharge it, and it just plugs into the wall, and it comes off. It's just down with Velcro. Oh, wonderful. So, you know, these old machines came with very little light. (laughs) So this is great to have that. What a difference. Look at you have the knee lift lever, the original one. And uh, Oh, yeah, that's great. And you have one of the folding chair tables. Yes. We have these portable folding tables that we can uh, fit any machine. And you have a nice little bag for your scraps. And oh, look at the right. red box. Oh, we all remember that, right? Oh, yeah, with the great tools in <laughs> and it. And then what do you do while you're sewing on this old I vintage? watch Linda's Z's videos. Oh, or, or I love others, it. Sometimes other sewing <laughs> videos, too. Oh, I love it. 